If you are powering multiple devices, add up their total wattage to ensure it stays within the inverter's capacity. This video answers the popular question, can I connect an inverter to a car battery? Yes, you can use an inverter on a car battery, but there are a few important things to consider to ensure it works safely and efficiently. If you are new to the channel, please subscribe and turn the notification bell on to get more contents like this. The size of the inverter matters. Car batteries usually provide 12 volts DC power, while inverters convert this to 110 volts or 220 volts AC. Ensure the inverter's wattage matches the power requirements of the devices you plan to run. Small devices like chargers and lights are fine, but high power appliances like refrigerators or power tools might be too much for a standard car battery and inverter setup. Car batteries are designed for short bursts of high power to start your car. Running an inverter for a long time can quickly deplete the battery, especially when the engine is off. It's best to use a deep cycle battery for longer or more power intensive use, as they are designed for sustained power draw. As you draw more power from the battery, its voltage will drop. If the voltage drops too low, the inverter may shut off, or the battery could become damaged. Some inverters have low voltage cutoffs to protect the battery. If you plan to run the inverter while the engine is running, make sure the car's alternator can supply enough power to keep the battery charged while also powering the inverter. Otherwise, you may overtax the alternator or drain the battery even with the engine running. Car batteries have limited capacity, usually measured in amp hours. If the inverter and devices connected to it draw more power than the battery can provide, the battery will drain quickly. For instance, a standard car battery might only last a few hours when powering a small device like a laptop, but much less for power-hungry devices. Make sure the inverter has built-in protections like overload, short circuit, and overheating protection. You should also ensure proper ventilation around both the inverter and the battery to avoid overheating. For short-term, low-power use, an inverter on a car battery can be fine, but for more extended use or powering heavy-duty equipment, consider a deep-cycle battery or a larger battery bank designed for continuous power delivery. Deep-cycle batteries are designed for sustained power over long periods and are better suited for powering an inverter. If you're using it for camping, emergencies, or portable setups, ensure the battery and inverter are adequately matched for the load you expect to run. The inverter typically comes with two terminals, positive, red, and negative, black. You will connect these to the car battery as follows. First, attach the red or positive cable from the inverter's positive terminal to the positive terminal of the car battery. If you are using a fuse or circuit breaker for safety, connect it between the positive terminal of the battery and the inverter. Then, connect the black or negative cable from the inverter's negative terminal to the negative terminal of the car battery. Make sure all connections are secure, and the cables are of the right gauge, thicker cables for higher wattage inverters. Check that there are no loose or exposed wires that could short-circuit. For added safety, you can install a fuse or circuit breaker between the inverter and the battery on the positive, red, cable. This prevents electrical overload and protects the system from short circuits or excessive current. Select a fuse rated for your inverter's wattage, e.g., if your inverter draws 100 amps, you should use a fuse rated for at least 120 amps. Before connecting any devices, turn on the inverter and ensure it powers up properly. Most inverters will have an indicator light or display to show that it is functioning. Also, check for any unusual noises or heat buildup around the inverter and battery. Once the inverter is running, you can now plug your devices into the inverter's AC outlets. Make sure you do not exceed the inverter's wattage rating. If you are powering multiple devices, add up their total wattage to ensure it stays within the inverter's capacity. When using the inverter, the car battery will drain more quickly than usual, especially when the engine is off. Here's how to manage the battery. To avoid draining the battery, it's recommended to keep the car engine running while the inverter is in use, as this allows the alternator to recharge the battery. Some inverters come with a low voltage alarm that warns you when the battery voltage drops too low, usually around 10.5 volts. When you hear this alarm, stop using the inverter and recharge the battery. Draining a starter battery completely can damage it. If using a deep cycle battery, make sure not to deplete it beyond 50% to prolong its life. Turn off the inverter first before disconnecting any cables or devices. 
Disconnect the negative, black, cable from the battery, then the positive, red, cable. Store the inverter in a safe, dry place when not in use. Both the inverter and battery generate heat, so ensure they are in a well-ventilated area to prevent overheating. Car batteries and inverters can produce dangerous gases, like hydrogen, especially when the battery is charging. Always use the setup in a well-ventilated area, preferably outside or in an open vehicle. Always check the power requirements of the devices you're plugging into the inverter. Overloading the inverter can cause it to shut down or overheat, which may damage the inverter or the battery. For high-power inverters, use the thickest and shortest cables possible to minimize voltage drop and heat buildup. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to share it and subscribe to see more like it.